Hi, Steve here, and this is my weekly diet update. This week I still weigh the same as last week. I weigh 245. I'm still doing good with, my, good with my diet, but I think I grubbed a little bit too much on the weekend and had too much candy, being Halloween and everything, so I still went to the gym and dieted on my three usual days, hardcore. But I did eat a lot of candy, and I think we went out and ate one time, so I weigh about the same as last week, but I feel like I'm getting thinner and I have more energy, so that's good. Anyway, so this week I'll be showing off my James Bond movie collection. You know, I like video games a lot, and I like scary movies a lot. I like movies in general a lot, but my only real, really big fandom is... James Bond. I've loved James Bond movies ever since I was a little kid. My parents let me watch them when I was about six, so I don't know if that's good or bad, but they're not as bad as some of the stuff you see on TV. There's a reason why I like James Bond movies so much. Uh, I watched a lot of movies when I was a kid, but those are the ones that stuck with me the most, and I liked them the most. I always thought James Bond movies were the best of everything, like James Bond was the coolest dude in any movie by far, and they, they were always the prettiest women, the most beautiful cars, the best villains, the, the best locations, the exotic locations, everything in there was, I thought, head and shoulders above any movie, to this, and still to this day I believe that. And I know a lot of other movies have that stuff too, but... James Bond movies, I think, are, are above all of them. That That's just me, but so if you disagree with me, you're wrong. <laughs> so anyway, here are my James Bond movies, and I have a couple books in here, too. Here's Dr. No. Here's another edition of Dr. No. This is one of my favorites. And here's a really old edition of it. I like this cover right here. Here's From Russia With Love. This is another one of my favorites. Another version of From Russia With Love. And yet another. This is a really old one. This is the one I used to rent from the public library when I was a kid or checked it out from the public library. Here's Goldfinger. This is, has to be in my top three. Goldfinger, another uh, edition of Goldfinger. Another version of Goldfinger. This one's really old. I remember this version was at the public library as well when I was a kid. Oh, and here's Goldfinger, the novel by Ian Fleming, the author of all of these things. This is one of the only books. I've only read a few books, but I really enjoyed this book. I recommend it. Re I'm trying to read all of the books. I just can't find them anywhere. I only got through Casino Royale, but I can't find Live and Let Die anywhere, so I could listen to them on audio, but I kind of want something to stimulate my brain because I don't really get much of that, so I kind of want to read them when I find them. Here's Thunderball. Another version of Thunderball on VHS. Uh, Here's You Only Live Twice. Here's another version of You Only Live Twice. And here's another one. Here's Honor Majesty's Secret Service. That's the only VHS version of that I have. This movie's really grown on me a lot. When I was a kid, I thought, where's Sean Connery? Where, where's Roger Moore? Who's this guy? But, and then it starts off really slow the first hour, kind of like the books start off really slow the first half, but the end of this movie picks up, and the whole thing is good. But anyway. Diamonds Are Forever. This is definitely one of my favorites. I know a lot of people don't like it, because it's campy and kind of fussy, but I really love the humor in this. This was Guy Hamilton. All of his were kind of more upbeat and, and fussy and uh, comical. I really like Diamonds Are Forever. Live and Let Die. 
the first Roger Moore. I love this movie so much. <laughs> This is, this is one of the ones that has a lot of good stunts in there. You can't believe the type of stunts they did back in 1973. Yeah, there were all kinds of good stunts in that movie, from boats jumping out of the water to a guy running over alleg real live alligators to a double-decker bus doing a 180. Anyway, The Man with a Golden Gun. The, I really like this one a lot as well. The Spy Who Loved Me, that's got to be in my top three. This has always been my favorite since I was a kid. And then Moonraker, this this might be my favorite. I, I know a lot of people talk down on it, but I really love this movie. It has so much, so much of it I like. It's funny and campy and and humorous, but at the same time it can be really dark in some parts. And here's another Moonraker on VHS. And here's the, the novelization of Moonraker, the film. It's not the Inflaming, the original story, which is totally different. This is a novelization of the, of the movie. It's, uh, the author's name is Christopher Wood. He wrote the screenplay for the, the movie Moonraker and The Spy Who Loved Me. I read this book. It's re it's really good. It follows the movie, but it's not quite as silly. I want to get the Spy Who Loved Me uh, film novelization of the film, but I can't find that anywhere. I've got I have to read through all the real books first. I only read a couple of the real books. For your eyes only. This is a really good one. Another one with so many good stunts. It's so serious, this movie, but Roger Moore is still in it, which lightens it up. I love this movie. Here's another For Your Eyes Only. And another version, the really old version. <laughs> and here's Octopussy. This has to be one of the best action movies ever. Here's another Octopussy. A View to a Kill, I love this one too. A lot of people think Roger Moore was too old for this, but I could have gone another five movies with Roger Moore. I don't care how old he gets. <laughs> I think he was ready to go by at this point. The Oh man. The Living Daylights. This is the very first movie I saw. It, the James Bond movie I saw at the theater. I was probably like, like nine years old. Wait, it came out in 87. So I was like eight years old when I saw this at the show. I love this. I like Timothy Dalton. And all these movies, all the John Glenn ones, I love them so much. John Glenn directed, yeah. John Glenn, John Glenn directed For Your Eyes Only all the way up until License to Kill. He directed like four, one, two, three. No, he directed five. I really like that era. I think it was because I was a kid and I watched a lot of those back then. Here's another Living Daylights. I love this movie so much. And another one. Don't worry, I didn't spend a lot of money on these. I probably got each of these for 25 cents at the most. License to Kill. I was probably about 10 when that came out at the show. I, I think I saw this at the show like three times. One time I saw it by myself. My mom dropped me off at the theater and I saw it by myself because no one wanted to go with me. <laughs> but this is so good. 1989. The same year as I think Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade came out that year. Which is awesome too, but this is better. And then it there was a hiatus for a while, and then here comes Goldeneye. I saw this at the show with my dad. We love this movie. 
I think I would have liked this movie more if the if the score was different, if the soundtrack. I didn't really like this. I like the song, the Golden Eye song, the Tina Turner song, but the music in this that didn't really move me or touch me like the other Bond movies with John Barry or uh, the new guy David Arnold or uh, who was it? Bill Conti or Marvin Hamlet or uh, George Martin. And here is Tomorrow Never Dies. Here's a version of that that it doesn't have the lid, but it comes with the tape and a bonus, a bonus uh, World of 007 VHS, and it has the script, the final script of Tomorrow Never Dies in there. I might give that a read sometime. Here's another Tomorrow Never Dies. Pierce Brosnan again. Here's The World Is Not Enough. This one was really good. I saw this at the theater a couple times. It wasn't really my favorite. I don't know why. I'll have to give it another watch. Here's Die Another Day. I thought this one was really kooky and silly when I first saw it, but, but I do really like this one. I, I hate to say it, but it's probably my favorite Pierce Brosnan. Okay, and up to the Daniel Craig's. Here's Casino Royale. This movie's so good. Uh, Martin Campbell directed it. He directed GoldenEye, too. So he kind of resurrected the James Bond movies twice. <laughs> this one's like the first actual reboot. I'm pretty sure all of the other ones prior to this were set in the same continuity, the same universe, same timeline. But this one is a, a reboot. Starts with Casino Royale, based on the, the book, the very first book, which I read, and I really enjoyed the book, and the movie is just as good, or even better. I, I don't know, I can't say which is better, but this is so good. When I first saw it, I was a little bit turned off because it was a little too dark and serious and brooding, and I usually like more, more uh, light-hearted James Bond movies, but I can't deny this is a darn good movie. I saw. I think I saw this three or four times at the theater. I think my wife even saw it with me a few times at the theater. I'm lucky to have a, a wife that's in the Bond movies, by the way. Quantum of Solace. This is not one of my favorites, but it, it's darn good. Skyfall. This is another really good one. I think this one made more money than any of them. And then here's uh, Spectre. This has got to be my favorite Daniel Craig movie. This has all the serious, brooding, dark stuff like the previous Daniel Craig's, but it's more lighthearted. It feels like it has the old Bond formula, the old style uh, Bond movie formula. This is really good. It's uh, uh, Sam Mendes. He directed this one and the previous one, uh, Skyfall. This one's so good. It, it felt like I was a kid again when I saw this. The the whole opening, the opening uh, sequence, and then it goes into the really cool uh, opening song, opening titles. There was a gun barrel. I forgot to mention the Casino Royale up through uh, Skyfall didn't have a gun barrel opening. And that's one of been my that's been one of my favorite things in Bond movies ever, and it was it was gone from the beginning of of those previous movies, but it was back in this. It made me feel so good when I saw the movie. And then another thing about this, Blofeld. Uh, Blofeld's licensings and Spectre and all that was a big jumbled mess. I don't want to get into that, but uh, Blofeld, uh, Bond's main antagonist in the early movies, he hasn't been around for 20 years or more, 30 years, 40. Until now, Blofeld returns in this. <laughs> and then here are some of the uh, non-Eon movies. This Casino Royale, the, the old version of it. I don't know about this movie. It has, uh, see I didn't even take it out of the wrapper, I just bought it for my collection. I've seen it before and it has good high production value and a lot of good actors in there, but it's just a jumbled mess to me. I think it's directed by four different people, so I guess that kind of shows why why it's a jumbled mess. 
Yeah, I thought I was just an idiot, and I didn't understand it because I'm an idiot. But then I see people like that guy Calvin Dyson, and he doesn't understand it, so I don't feel so stupid now. <laughs> and then Never Say Never Again. That was from another production studio. Sean Connery came back for this. It was the same time as uh, Octopussy. I think it was released in the show the same time as Octopussy. So Sean Connery came back in 1983. I wish I would have been old enough to go see a double feature with Never Say Never Again and Octopussy. <laughs> I can't imagine. That would be too much awesome for one day. This movie, I've always liked this a lot. I think I might even like it a little bit better than Thunderball. Have you ever heard of a remake with uh, the same actor playing the same role? I guess John Wayne has done it. Uh, I don't know. But this is a remake of Thunderball. And I love it, especially the first half. The end is not, eh, whatever, kind of anticlimactic, but the the movie, the, uh, the whole of the movie, I like it. And here's Never Say Never Again, the VHS. And then I have some laser discs. Don't ask me why. I don't even have a laser disc player, but these things I pick them up at the music store for like 50 cents. So I have to bring them home. I have Moonraker. My favorite uh, James Bond movie, pretty much. So I know a lot of people don't agree with me, but I lo love Moonraker. And here's The Spy Who Loved Me. That's another one of my favorites. Tomorrow Never Dies, a laser disc. Live and Let Die, this one's still sealed. I love Live and Let Die. And here's a a deluxe letterbox edition. This is Sean Connery Volume 2. Thunderball, Diamonds Are Forever, You Only Live Twice. Love all of those, <laughs> of course. And here's another Thunderball, just a, a single. Golden Eye. And uh, Goldfinger, it must be an English and Japanese uh, release. Uh. Anyway, that's my James Bond movie collection. Can't tell you what my top five James Bond movies are because it changes from year to year. Usually I have a few are consistently up there on top, but then when I go watch another one, I think, well, this one should be on top two. It's too hard for me to make a top five. But let me know in the comments what your favorite James Bond movies are. If you happen to watch this video, I like to talk about James Bond movies. And my wife gets sick of it sometimes. She's pretty good about it, but I could go on and on. Anyway, I'll see you next week for my uh, diet update. Bye. <laughs>